Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for your attention this evening. What a, what a joy and privilege it is to worship the Lord together. I'm, I'm glad for the occasion, glad for the opportunity. We shouldn't take that for granted to openly assemble and to praise the... That, just so nobody else is confused, there's only one true living God, and His name is Jesus. Amen. And uh, we want to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord. Let's take our Bibles, turn to Jonah chapter number 2 if you're not already there. And it looks like tonight will be Jonah's exit from the race. I mean, from the whale. And <laughs> I just threw that in there. Just messing with you all. Let's read here in Jonah chapter number 2 and verse number 9. We'll pray and get into the message tonight. The Bible says in Jonah chapter 2 and verse number 9, But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Father in heaven, we come before you this afternoon. We thank you once again for allowing us to meet together, Lord, to assemble as you have commanded. And God, thank you for doing so in such a way that we don't have to fear or to fret about being discovered. In fact, God, we want to broadcast this not only out on the internet, but Lord, draw other people to come in and be discipled and saved. And Lord, we just pray, Father, as we have this time together, would you help us to uh, receive it, Lord, that we wouldn't uh, reject it, but Lord, that we'd be receivers of the truth. Truth, Lord, as we spoke about this morning, that we would make application to those things. And God, that you would get all the glory, all the praise, for it's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. Let's just, let's just do a quick little reminder here so we can keep our line of thought in sync. We saw on Wednesday night the recipe for restoration. And that is seeing things the way that God sees them. Amen. You'll never get right with God until you see sin the way that God sees it. And then we saw how Jonah has chosen to separate himself from the practitioners of sin. And ultimately, ultimately, Jonah rejected lying vanities and chose rather to observe the Scriptures, and we saw him take those truths and not just stop there, but to seek and put them in the shoe leather this morning where he, in verse number 9, said, But I will. He gave his will over to God. He exercised it in obedience to God's command, and he worked out his own salvation. We see that he worships the Lord, and he says, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving and spirit in truth, Jonah gives the only thing to God that he possibly has to offer, and that is himself. That is true worship tonight, by the way. The only thing that we can honestly do for God is to empty ourselves of our own ideas and our philosophies and our plans and allow God to fill us with His Spirit, and we go about doing whatsoever He bids us to do. And lastly, we see that Jonah decided to keep his Word. Look what it says, I will pay that that I have vowed. Amen. What an important thing to keep our word. As I said this morning, God's real concerned about keeping His word, so He's concerned about you keeping yours as well. I'm thankful for that last phrase in verse number 9, salvation is of the Lord. I'm reminded of Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12. There is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved, and that name is Jesus. Hallelujah. But now we see in Jonah chapter 2 and verse number 10, the end result of Jonah's determination to do right. Look at what it says here in verse number, verse number 10. It says, And the Lord spake. You know me. I can't get through a whole verse without saying something about a few words put together. I'll just go ahead and tell you tonight, there's four places that we're going to look at here in this verse specifically, and we'll comment on those, God willing. But the very first thing I wanted to make apparent to you tonight is the fact that the Word of God is powerful. 
Aren't you glad it says in verse number 10 that God spake to the whale and the whale did what God said? Hallelujah. You know what the Bible says in, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 3 said, Let there be light and there was light. Hallelujah. God's word is so powerful. He says in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. When God says it, that settles it. Amen. When God says it, it happens. I'm glad that the Lord was able to tell that whale what to do, and the whale said, yes, sir, God, I'll do exactly what you said. And I'm reminded of the end result of that thing. Not only is Jonah saved out of the 10,000 leagues under the sea, but it reminds us of our own salvation from sin. And Isaiah chapter 59 and verse number 1 says this, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Hallelujah. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. I'm reminded of what is said in Genesis chapter 18 and verse number 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Amen. The answer to that is no. Jesus said, with men it may be impossible, but with God all things are Possible. You know what I see here? Here's this whale, or as it says in the text, the great fish. Preacher, where are you getting whale from? Jesus said it was a whale. Amen. So I've got some scripture to back that up. But we can call it a great fish if we want to, because it's right here in Jonah as well. But, you know, we, we, we see this thing right here that God has done. He has spoken to Job's, excuse me, not Job's. <laughs> He's spoken to Jonah's captain. He's, he's spoken to Jonah's imprisonment and he's able to cause that captor, he's able to set the captive free from the captor. I don't know what you're bound with this afternoon. I don't know what it is that's holding you back or hindering you from living for God or serving Him to the fullest, but whatever it is, God's Word is sufficient to take care of it. God's Word is still good enough to cause you to be able to break free of the bondage of sin. Amen. I'll say amen for myself. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord spake. But listen to this. You know who God is talking to? It says, unto the fish. Now, this to me, in my estimation, one of the greatest rebukes to mankind that I can see in the Scriptures. Because... When God told the whale, swallow Jonah, the whale swallowed Jonah. When, when God told the whale to spit Jonah out, the whale spit Jonah out. There wasn't an argument. Uh, there wasn't a TED Talk. There wasn't a debate. It wasn't, well, Lord, I just don't really feel like it's what I want to do right now. And that's not the direction that I was. I wanted to go over towards the Pacific, Lord. I don't know the whale said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter number 8 that creation, the whole creation, waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. They're groaning and travailing in pain until now because they are under the curse which Adam caused and they are tired of the weight of sin. Anybody in here got an animal that they love, got a pet that they enjoy? I know we have one. And isn't it wonderful, you get up and uh, scooch up real close to that little doggie. I don't know who would have a cat, but anyway, uh, you know, if y'all need to get right with God. But you get close to that little dog, and uh, you, you pet its head, and it's excited, and wagging its tail, and it's looking at you. And you know, when that dog is not thinking about eating... And when that dog is not thinking about sleeping, and when that dog is not thinking about other dog things, you know what it's thinking about when it's looking at you? It's thinking, when is this guy going to get right with God? I am waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hey, hey, you, you're saved. I know it. I can see it. I can sense it as an animal. I don't know if that's true or not. I just made that up. But maybe they can, I don't know. Maybe then they're looking at us 
as Christians. And they're saying, when are you going to start acting like a Christian? And here's a whale that God has to create because Jonah disobeyed him and the whale is more obedient than the prophet of God. That hurts. But it's true. You know what, I, I, maybe this has never been a, an issue for you, but there's been times in the middle of the night, I have been prompted by the Spirit of God, and He said, it's time to get up. It's time to pray. It's time to read some extra Scripture today. And I don't know, you know, your circumstance may call for, for different applications, but nevertheless, there's been times where I know for sure without a shadow of a doubt that God has told me to do something. And I said, well, you know, I'm not so sure. And I am kind of, maybe that was part of the dream. And you know what I do? And I'm just telling on myself. I know what God wants me to do, and I don't do it. And, and you, you do what God, you don't do what God wants you to do. And yet, here we see that God commands not only the whales, but how about the waves? He sent out a wind <laughs> after the ship. And the wind was tempestuous and the waves were crashing. And as soon as God said, wind stop, as soon as God said, waves stop, do you know what they did? They stopped. Oh, how sad. The, the Word of God is powerful. And He is mighty to save. And He can command creation down to the smallest atom. But yet the ones that were created in His very image are the ones that still disobey Him. We ought to, we ought to take note of the fact that the birds of the air and the fish in the sea... All obey the voice of their Creator. What is our problem? And I, I mean that collectively, my, myself included. I, what is my why? When when we have the capability, not only is He our Creator, but we have communion with Him through the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. What would ever be our hesitation of doing? What He has told us to do. What a rebuke that we see is God is able to speak to this fish. And the fish, I don't even know if the fish knows English, but the fish still did what God told it to do. That's amazing. That's right. Didn't have a choice. But we do. And we choose on a constant basis not to follow through with the will of of God. The Bible says in chapter 2 and verse number 10, And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited. Don't you love that word? It vomited. You know, you sometimes you think, well, don't, couldn't we, couldn't we, we, we're King James Bible believers, don't, don't you think we could change that word to something else? No, I like it. I'm glad that it's there. Not just because I have a strange curiosity, but because it shows the violent nature and the humiliating process of restoration. I'll tell you tonight, I'm thankful that Jonah had that recipe to get right with God. And I'm thankful that he began to see things the right way and he began to work things out the right way. But you imagine as he's vomited up on that shore... He's probably got stuff all over him. You know, he smells bad. Horrible. Who knows how many showers that he is going to need. And, and, and they hadn't made it yet, but if they had, somebody would have bought Jonah about three gallons of Febreze and said, Jonah, you just go ahead and take a bath in this. That's humiliating. That's embarrassing. And that's why a lot of people don't get right with God. Because they think, well, I've, I've made all these decisions. I've already, everybody knows that God told me to go to Nineveh and I said no and I went to Joppa. Everybody knows I'd already moved all my Roth IRAs and all my 401k stocks and all the things that I had. They already know I moved it all to Tarshish. 
They know how much I paid to get on the ship. And, and they know how far I went in defiance to God. And oh, I just couldn't bear to have to come back and humble myself before the same people who saw me in defiance to the will of God. There's a lot of people that find themselves in that circumstance. And, of course, it's a pride issue because they won't humble themselves. But it's an honest issue. When, when you do something wrong to somebody, and you know you did, and you know the Spirit of God is telling you to go to apologize, isn't it hard? A little embarrassing? Yeah, it is. It is. Imagine, imagine Jonah. And when we are in the process of restoration, we have to be willing to go through embarrassment. We have to, sometimes it can be a violent and a disgusting event as we display to everyone our error and we say, I was wrong. Everything that I did was wrong. I made dumb decisions. Look at me. I, my name is Jonah. I'm the one that didn't do the will of God when I had the opportunity to do it the first time. Embarrassment. I don't know if that's you tonight. I don't know if there's something in your life and some area of disobedience and, and you know you need to get it right and the only thing hindering you is the fear of embarrassment, I'm telling you, get over that. Don't worry about that. In fact, look, look to our Savior as the example. Jesus, who never did anything wrong. Jesus, who is the perfect picture of perfection. Amen. The Bible says He humbled Himself. And He didn't have to. And Jesus said in Luke chapter number 14 and verse number 11, For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. You remember what happened to Jonah? He exalted himself against the will of God. Guess what? Down, 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 down to the bottom of the mountains he went. But whosoever, or excuse me, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Jonah got right with God. There was some reconciliation made. And he had to humble himself and go through the process of being vomited out on the shore for all the world to see. It's, it's a humiliating process. Now, there's, there's some things that have happened to Jonah as a result of his disobedience. Now, he's, he's back on dry land. The Bible's telling us that he is. But he is forever changed from this moment forward. And in those times where you and I run away from God, and when we ignore what God has ha asked us to do, and, or when we decide just to go and do our own way, we end up incurring some scars that should have never been ours. And you won't ever defy the living God without experiencing some detrimental effect on your life. And you may walk away from your disobedience and you don't smell like a fish. But rebelling against God carries its consequences. Jonah's journey brought him back to the place where God originally spoke to him. And we're thankful for second chances, aren't you? But it won't ever be the same as it was. And there's a burden that Jonah will have to carry because of his disobedience. Something that he should have never had to worry about. Something that wasn't his lot. But because he disobeyed God. Thank God for restoration. Thank God for pulling us up out of the muck and mire of the sin that we've fallen into but you won't ever get pulled back up out of that without incurring some damage first. All the handicaps that come from not heeding the Word of God. But I am thankful for this. I am. And I'm not and this, is, this is why I say this afterwards. But I am thankful that Jonah can look at some of those marks and and some of those lacerations and some of those wounds and those scars that he has incurred in his disobedience. And he can think, you know, I shouldn't even be here. 
God should have killed me. But he didn't. And that doesn't make much of disobedience. That's not why we, should, we shouldn't live in that type of mindset. But maybe you're on the other side of this thing. You've done wrong and you've been there and you know exactly what I'm preaching about because I'm preaching your story. And here's what we need to remember tonight. You can't do anything about yesterday. You can't do anything about last week or last year. You can't do anything except for do something right now and maybe you look down, maybe you've got something on your hand. Maybe you've got something in your heart. Maybe you've got something in your head. Maybe you've got something in your past. And you can think to yourself, I, shouldn't be, I should be dead. I should be in hell with my back broke. I should be shipwrecked on the shore with no chance to recover. But here I am, thank God for the scars of grace. Isn't that good? Praise the Lord. So we see as he's vomited out, there is a humiliating process of restoration. You've got to humble yourself in order to be restored. And, and you will forever be changed in a negative fashion when you run from God. But we thank the Lord that through it all, there can still be hope because of what God can still use us to do. Let's look at this last phrase here in verse number 10. The Bible says, And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah. Don't you like when I say that? Vomited out Jonah. <laughs> upon, upon the dry land. Now in order to get the full context of what I'm fixing to say, I want to read to you chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 one more time. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Let's read verse number 3. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Here in this circumstance, we see the providence of God's placement of Jonah back onto the shore. You know what God has done? He has put and positioned Jonah in a place where he is most likely to succeed. Isn't God a good God? He didn't put Jonah in Alaska. I, it, I am convinced, it is my firm conviction, that God put Jonah right back where he heard the Word of God in the first place. And when the Word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, he wasn't farther from his destination. Yes, he lost some time. God didn't put a bunch of roadblocks in his way to make it harder for him. No, he put him right back where he left off. And yes, he's got some scars. Yes, there's some lost time. Yes, the way is narrowed. The scope of his ministry is not what it could have been. But nevertheless, God still wants him to get to Nineveh. God still wants him to preach to those people. The, the providence of God's placement. The Bible says in, in Revelation chapter number 2, in verse number 5, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. When you get right with God, when you go through the humiliating process of restoration, when you acknowledge the handicaps that you have because you didn't heed the Word of God, but when you thank the Lord as you see the scars and know that you were saved, amen, when you get right with God, He will take you back to the place where you heard His Word. You know why? Because God, before He can use Jonah again, God, before He can use you again, He's got to get you back on solid ground. Amen? I'm telling you tonight, if, 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 if you've been steeped in drug addiction, God wants to rescue you out of that. And God wants to use you one more time. If you've been steeped in immorality, God wants to rescue you out of that and He wants to use you one more time. If you have had some other sin in your life, some besetting sin, God wants to rescue you out of that and use you. But before He can do that, you've got to get established 
in the present truths of the Word of God. God God doesn't take people off the street who have been living in sin and then put them behind a pulpit. Does that make sense tonight? God's not going to rescue you out of your circumstance and then all of a sudden make you part of the leadership of a local church. Does that make sense tonight? You know know what He's going to do? He's going to put you back on some dry land. He's going to give you a place to walk it out. He's going to give you a place to get some exercise in. He's going to help you to get your land legs back. Amen? And you know what? I I looked at this, this term in the Bible, dry land. Dry land. And you know what I found? God is so good. He knows exactly how to write His Word. He knows how, to, how, how we need cross-references. I, I just think the Word of the Lord is so wonderful. I'm so thankful for it. It's new. It's, 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 it's refreshing. Amen. But the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, in verse number 10, that He created the dry land, and He called the dry land earth. And you know what He said about that dry land that He created, that He called earth? He said, it was good. And you know what God wants to do? God wants to rescue you. God wants to use you, but He wants to set you in a good place. Amen? He doesn't want to hurt you. He doesn't want to harm you. He wants to set you in a good place where you can prosper and where you can grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I I saw over there in Exodus chapter 14 and verse number 29 how the Israelites crossed the Red Sea on dry land. And it said that there was a a wall unto the left and a wall to the right. And you know what I found out? They were in a, not just a good place, they were in a safe place. Because Pharaoh's army couldn't get to them. You know what God wants you to do? God wants you to, to set you in a good place for you to grow. God wants to set you in a safe place for you to be secure But one last instance I saw in Joshua chapter number 3, we see the Israelites, after they've wandered around and around in the desert, kind of like Jonah swimming around and around in the belly of the whale, they finally get to pass over the Jordan into Canaan land. And you know what the Bible says that they did when they passed over that Jordan? They passed over on dry land. You know what God wants to do? God wants to set you in a good place so you can grow. God wants to set you in a safe place so that you can be secure. But God wants to place you on the pathway to fulfill your purpose. Those Israelites, they were supposed to get over there into Canaan land. And when the God parted the waters, when He set them on that dry land to walk across, guess what? They were able to get where they were supposed to go. And here's the amazing part about it. Not only not only was it a positive effect for those that were alive right then, but for generations to come, that, that one decision to make that crossing over the Jordan positively affected generations to follow. I'm telling you, God God loves you tonight. And He wants to restore you tonight. And you're going to have to be honest enough and humble enough to go through that difficult process of restoration. And yes, there's going to be some changes that were made to hurt. And, and there's going to be, you're going to thank God for some scars of grace. And, but God, He's going to put you on that dry land to get a solid foundation under you once again. And not just a solid foundation, but for you to grow, to be secure, and for you to ultimately fulfill your purpose, and not for yours only, but for all those that will come after you. God's good tonight. And He has a desire for you to fulfill your purpose. And I don't know where you are. You know what I'm hoping tonight? I'm hoping that you're a a chapter 1, verse number 2, Christian, where God said for the first time, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Because if you're right there, right now, then you know what you can do? You can avoid 
all the rest of chapter 1 and all the rest of chapter 2 and you can just go ahead and do what God has called you to do and told you to do and you can fulfill your purpose and you don't have to be humiliated because you've got to repent and be restored. You don't have to worry about those handicaps that come from not heeding the Word of God and you don't have to look down and remember scars of grace because you don't have no scars. You can lift up your hands and say, Thank God I never had to get any. But tonight, wherever you are in the process... God wants you to get right. God wants you to go forward. God wants you to get busy. God wants you to fulfill your purpose. You doing that tonight? You follow God on that pathway. He'll enable you if you'll heed Him. Let's pray tonight. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for the kindness that you showed to us. Lord, in all the disobedience that we see in the life of Jonah, and yet you still extend to him opportunity after opportunity. Lord, all the ways in which we have disregarded your counsel and went our own ways, and yet you're still long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish. God, would you help us tonight? Would you help us, if we need it, Lord, that we'd be restored We'd repent. We'd get right. And Lord, I pray, Father, for those in here who find themselves still on the dry, grand, dry land, never let, leaving it. Lord, I, I pray, Father, would you help them to determine tonight to never forsake you, but to follow you in all of your pathways. God, we pray that you'd get all the honor and all the glory. Lord, that you'd touch hearts tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Miss Paul, if you'll come, we'll pray. Uh, just just for a minute, just for a moment. If you'd like to come to the altar, I'd encourage you to do so tonight and uh, seek the Lord while He may be found. And uh, I just want to take a little bit of time tonight and pray and seek the Lord myself. If you'd like to do that, the altar is open.